Hey weirdos, welcome back. I know that a lot of you are super excited for this video and I'm pretty excited to give it to you. So we're gonna get into my first fill-in with Builder Gel. Now, there are some stuff that I really, really wanna tell you about. I have forms on my desk because I was considering doing a chop and building with a form instead of doing a fill, but um, quickly changed my mind. I just didn't have the patience for it. Maybe I will at some point. Although since this video, um, I have cut my nails down. So now they're just my natural nails with the builder gel and stuff on top. But what do you see on my nails right now? I am prepping my nail for the fill, by the way. That's what I'm doing with my file. I'm just getting everything nice and rough and taking down a little bit, teeny tiny bit of the bulk because I'm going to add more when I do the fill. On my nails right now, I have tips. I have gel base and natural dip powder. I did like a, you know, pour over or whatever. And this just goes to show how versatile these products are together. Cause even though I have gel and acrylic on my nail right now, I'm gonna backfill it with just builder gel. And it was so freaking easy. If you're the kind of person that likes to do, you know, some kind of a base, like an acrylic base, do a couple of layers of clear and then do color on top. And then when you are tired of that color, you wanna file it all off down to the clear. This is a great way to backfill your clear if you don't like doing dip powder fill-ins. If you like doing dip fills, by all means, keep doing it. I'm not a big fan. I don't know why, I can never really get into it. I'm just more prone to soak the whole thing off and re-dip. But I understand if you're doing the gel method and you're not using dip liquids, removal can be kind of a pain in the ass. So this might be a really, really great alternative for you. If you like that kind of thing, if you like to file off your color and have a clear layer down, or if you're like me and you are all aboard the peel base train, <laughs> um, I don't know if the unpeel off base coat is still on sale. It'll be in my Amazon storefront if you want to check it out, but that's my peel off base coat, the kind that not mine, I didn't make it. <laughs> I don't sell it either, um, but that's the stuff that I use uh, on every single Manny, every single Manny, I am using Unt, 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 whatever you want to call it, peel off base coat. That's just my go-to. So if you like the peel base type stuff, if you want to change your Manny's every couple of days, this is also something that you might really be into. So now that I've gotten my prep done and all I did was file, I just filed off the stuff. I did my, my cuticle prep. My cuticle prep is so minimal because I do my nails so often. I really don't have any cuticles anymore. Lucky me, I know. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go ahead and dehydrate the natural nail. You don't have to do this on the extension or on the place on your nail, the place, the rest of your nail that has product on it, just your natural nail, get off all those natural oils. And now I'm gonna go in with primer. I go back and forth with primers. Um, for today, I'm gonna use the Mia Secret Extra Bond. Um, I usually use the Young Nails Protein Bond as well. And I'm just going to prime. I'm gonna prime the whole nail. I'm sure that's overkill. It, it's gonna help with adhesion of the gel. Uh, you definitely wanna put this on your natural nail, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover my entire nail with it just because I can, I guess. <laughs> now I'm gonna do two things in this video. I'm gonna show you how to use the IBD Builder Gel in the pot that you can see right here. And I'm also gonna use the Dipalicious Builder Gel in a bottle. I really wanted to do some kind of like little comparison video. Now, I should have prefaced this entire video with this statement right here. I am not a Builder Gel person, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, I've only worked with it a couple of times, so. This is kind of a be beginner perspective on the whole thing. You guys know uh, dip is kind of my jam, even though I'm not a pro, I'm not a nail tech. Oh, hi, I'm, if you're new, <laughs> I'm Marla Chris. Uh, I'm not a pro nail anything. I'm a DIYer, just like most of you probably are. I just like to share some of my experiences and stuff that I learn with you guys. So without further ado, I'm gonna go in with the gel base. This is not a required step for some Builder Gel product. I think whatever you're using, you're gonna have to do a little research and find out how they want you to apply your Builder Gel. From my experience, which isn't much, uh, J what? <laughs> gel base is a required step. So I'm gonna go ahead and put um, a layer or coat or whatever of the gel base over my entire nail 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and cure for 30 seconds. And then we're gonna get into the actual builder gel fun. <laughs> you guys are seeing the whole shebang today. I'm sorry if this video is a little lengthy. I will have timestamps linked down below, although I don't know what you would fast forward to. You're stuck with me for 27 minutes. So now that I've gotten that cured, it's still sticky. We're not touching the nail with alcohol yet. I'm gonna go right in with builder gel. So the first thing I'm gonna do is builder in a bottle. I think. <laughs> and here's what I'm going to do. If you can see the viscosity of this, I'm going to give you a quick comparison right here of the two. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but in my personal opinion, having used both of these products side by side, the texture and viscosity of both of these builder gels was pretty much the same. They were both equally, I don't know, gloopy. <laughs> This is as technical as it gets here, folks. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what you signed up for, but this is it. So the texture was very, very similar. Um, what I like about this stuff, let's, let's do pros and cons, shall we? What I like about the builder in the pot, not in the bottle, the IBD stuff. And I'm sure there are many, many other types of builder gel you can grab. I do have a video coming up on Yayogi. They sent me a bunch of their builder gel, so I will be trying that out as well. But the stuff in the pot, what I like about it is I find, well, not like I'll be able to get through all this product anytime in the near future, but if you're the person who uses Builder Gel often, I think the pot is going to be better bang for your buck only because uh, I feel like the stuff in the bottle, like there's no good way to get everything out of the bottom of that bottle. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the pot's going to be easier for you to get the last bit of product out. That's the only thing I can think of that I would be more inclined to purchase the stuff in the pot for. But as you will see, and maybe it's the brush that I used. I don't know. I just, I grabbed a brush. <laughs> I don't know if it's the right brush or the wrong brush. It's just a brush. But what I found is that the application of the builder gel in the bottle, and I'm sure it has to do a lot with the brush too, as you'll see coming up. I like the application with the brush out of the bottle much better. I think it contours better to the natural curve of my cuticle. And that's something that you're going to have to figure out for yourself because all cuticle shapes are different. You have to figure out what's going to work best for you. So here's where I'm going. I picked up a little dollop of that builder gel stuff. I decided to go with the IBD first and I'm putting it down towards the cuticle area. And that's where I'm going to focus kind of most of the product and then blend it down the rest of the nail. So we're doing a backfill and kind of a recoat on the whole nail surface. And from what I've seen and what I've done in the past, what I'm going to do with the builder gel is hold my finger upside down for just a couple of seconds, as you'll see me do here in any minute now. <laughs> I'm just messing with it at this point, trying to get it as like even and level as possible. And you can, without going upside down, you can get this kind of sort of level, but this is the best way to do it. Upside down, just for like 10 or 15 seconds, and this will level itself, A, and B, it's gonna help, gravity is gonna pull that towards the natural apex of your nail. So it's gonna naturally help you create that natural apex. Why is an apex important? That's a great question. I'll tell you why. If you have nails that are approximately the length that my nails are in this video, you want a little bit of an apex because an apex is going to support your free edge. Basically, this is what's going to keep or prevent you from breaking your nails. And that's the natural stress point, by the way, is where the apex should be. It's approximately somewhere around where your nail attaches to your nail bed like where the skin meets your nail down there, under there. So that's why you want an apex. If you have nails that are shorter than mine, if you have little nubby nails, I wouldn't even consider building an apex for that because that's, there's really no break risk. But if your nails are on the longer side, you make, wanna make sure you have some sort of an apex there just to help support that length of your nail. I cured the builder gel for 60 seconds. You're gonna have to check on your builder gel that you have and you know what the cure time, recommended cure time is. Don't be afraid to reach out to companies, by the way. When I grabbed these, or when Dipolicious sent them to me, I should say, I had a million questions for her. I wanted to know exactly <laughs> how she recommended the products be used because if I made some, some sort of mistake in using the products or if something didn't work well, 
I needed to make sure that it was either user error or product error or whatever, um, but everything worked out fine. I really like it. Speaking of which, I'm gonna go ahead and now do a fill with the builder in a bottle. And as you can see, like I said, the consistency is pretty much the same. I grab a little bead on the bottom of the brush and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did from the IBD, builder gel in a pot. Focus, foc what? I can't. What is it about this day? <laughs> Focusing this right near the cuticle area and I'm gonna just blend it down into the sidewalls and down to the rest of the nail. I'm not trying to build bulk. You don't want your nails to be bulky because that will usually cause lifting. Hopefully we've prevented the lifting with all the prep steps. I know prep sometimes to some people can seem like just an arduous mundane chore, but it really is so important for the longevity of your overlay. You know, if you don't want to keep doing it over and over and over again because it's lifting or popping off, take the time, do the prep, do the stuff you got to do. <laughs> so that went on super quick, super easy. I, I'm telling you, I think it's the brush. I just, and that's such a personal preference. You got to determine what's right for you what style of brush you like, what contours to fit your nail the best, and that is the product you're gonna have the most luck using. So I'm gonna fill the rest of my nails. I'm gonna do two more nails with the builder in the bottle, and then I'm gonna do my thumb with the um, builder in the pot. Just so you guys can see without me yapping your ears off and probably distracting you from the actual video itself. And I will come back for the next step. Okay, so I've gotten my fill pretty much done. The next thing I'm gonna do is just a me thing. It's not a builder gel thing, but instead of cleaning off the tacky layer from my builder gel, cause there is a tacky layer, I'm gonna go ahead and use a no wipe gel top coat right over top. And I'm gonna file over this. You could skip this step completely, wipe off your tacky layer from your builder gel and start filing, but I don't, I don't, for some reason, the sticky layer freaks me out. <laughs> Maybe it's me. I have weird texture issues. I know. You know how I feel about liquid latex? I feel kind of the same way about the tacky layer of gel. So I'm going to go ahead and top coat everything. 
and I'm going to get this cured for a full 60 seconds and then I'm going to go right into filing which I'm going to let you guys watch. There is not a whole lot of filing involved because the builder gel levels so beautifully. I'm just going to crisp up my shape and give myself a very very slight contour. I'm going to let you guys watch in peace and quiet <laughs> and then we're going to be kind of ready to roll. So I'm going to let you guys hang out and I'll be back with the final steps. I know all that filing was so hard <laughs> telling you filing over gel way easier than filing over anything else it's so soft and easy to file so another Marla thing you don't have to do this I'm going to go ahead and prime my nails again and reapply my top coat and here's why if you're going to use peel off base coat which I do if you're not a peel based person totally disregard what I'm doing from here forward but if you're a peel off base coat person peel off base coat it's a strange creature <laughs> anything that's got texture to it i find makes the peel base not very effective so you want to always apply your peel off base coat over something super smooth now since i just roughed up my nails with my file there are grooves in my nails and i'm going to fill in those grooves by means of Again, applying primer. Primer helps adherence. So if you're putting on any kind of gel product on your nail, on an overlay, on whatever, primer is always a good idea. It's gonna help your gel from peeling or prevent your gel from peeling, I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead, apply my primer. And I'm gonna put on another coat of top coat. And that's just going to be the perfect canvas for me to then put on my peel off base coat and start a whole dip mani. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed over the last however many minutes you've been watching, but I have been using a ton, a crap ton of different products from different lines. And I've often heard people ask if you can co-mingle products like that. Um, I do. <laughs> I do. I do it constantly and I never have any issues. Another question that I get pretty consistently is what kind of a lamp do you need to cure these products? All these products require a lamp. This is again, kind of a personal preference thing. And there are some products that require a UV. There are some products that require an LED. Everything will be labeled or again, as I say, in the set of the beginning, definitely contact your distributor or your manufacturer and ask the questions. But for those reasons, my preference on a gel lamp is a combo LED UV. And I like anything that's over 48 Watts. I just find for me, this particular lamp, and right now I'm using the Nail Addict LA UV LED. Um, I have a bunch. I have a couple of different lamps that I rotate back and forth. Um, but anything that's LED UD combo or 48 watts or higher should theoretically cure 
any of these gel products. Um, also including poly gel. That's a whole nother beast that I really don't want to tackle again. I might have to eventually. <laughs> I don't want to. Okay, so back to what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and give these a buff. This is, again, just a personal preference. Um, I don't know. I have weird isms. You guys probably know I'm the biggest weirdo ever. And I don't like glossy natural nails. I don't. I don't know. It's weird. If I'm going to have just natural nails, I need them to have the, I don't know, look of a natural nail. And that is not glossy. So I'm going to go ahead and give a buff over this. And that's my perfect canvas for peel base. Um, you totally don't have to. You can leave them glossy if you want to. Uh, I just don't. <laughs> I don't know why. I am such a weirdo. It's, I don't know. Do you guys, are you guys like that? I didn't give you a question of the day. I don't know if you're still here. I, mean, I might just be talking to myself. If you're still here, question of the day is, do you prefer glossy nails or do you prefer matte nails? For me, natural nails never should be glossy. That's just a me thing. And then when it comes to like a colored mani, totally depends. Depends on my mood, depends on the time of year, depends on the weather outside. I don't, <laughs> it changed. My mind changes about the finish of my top coat uh, as often as, I don't know, I, 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 can't, I was going to say change my socks, but I don't wear socks, so I don't know. Pretty often though. Um, now I'm just going to dust off my nails and I'm ready to apply my peel base and I'm ready to get into a mani. I don't know if this was helpful for you guys at all. I'm hoping it was. I know that this was very much anticipated and I hope I didn't disappoint. I did go ahead and do my other hand, by the way. Uh, I did my dominant hand and it didn't come out badly. I did it all with the builder in a bottle. I didn't bother with the IBD stuff. I'm like, I'm just going to do the whole thing with one hand <laughs> just for my own sanity's sake. But now I'm just going to clean them off. I'm going to de-dust them. That's it. Just taking a dusty brush, a little bit of rubbing alcohol and put on some cuticle oil and that's the whole process that's the whole fill in and i'm gonna do this probably how you know that's another question how often should you do a fill in depends on your nails um if you have nails that grow like super duper fast my nails do grow fast and i attribute that mostly to cuticle oil by the way i did an experiment a while back and i did prove that cuticle oil can increase your rate of growth it can happen um but yeah, as far as when you should do a fill, whenever you feel like you need one, don't let anyone tell you when you should or shouldn't be doing stuff. You are your own nail tech and you do what you want to do. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I so appreciate you taking the time to spend with me and I will catch you in the next vid. Love you. Bye.